Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Hutchinson, the managing editor of hogbeat.com, the Arkansas site and the Rivals Network. The Hogs are 3-0 for the first time in five years. They're ranked number 16 in the AP poll, and they have a huge matchup looming with number seven, Texas A&M. Uh, with that, it's time to go behind enemy lines once again for an insider's perspective on the upcoming game. Uh, Mark Passwaters covers the Aggies for AggieYell.com, another one of our sister sites at Rivals. Uh, he was kind enough to join us from, from the airport today. Uh, he had a little vacation he went on to this, this past week. So, Mark, uh, appreciate you taking the time. How are you today? I'm doing good, Andrew. Just waiting to get home to Houston. <laughs> well, let, let's jump right into it. Uh, what's kind of the excitement level uh, among the Texas A&M fan base and, and that team right now for, for this top 25 showdown? I would say anxiety is probably a better word than excitement. Um, you know, the, the Aggies figured coming in, well, the fan base figured coming into the season that this would be a game that, uh, you know, they, they'd pretty much dominate. You look at last year, there was a lot of concern about what Barry Odom could do and how Sam Pittman had really changed the mindset of the program. And then AM came out and scored on seven straight possessions, and that, that game was over by the middle of the third quarter. Uh, obviously, beating Texas got people's attention. And uh, the way AM's offensive line is played, uh, you know, there's there's some concern here. You know, people want to see the Aggies perform the way that they should, and they haven't as yet. I'm going to get into that offensive line here in just a second, but I know everyone, the first thing everyone wants to talk about is quarterback play. You know, AM got the bad news with Haynes King going down and going to miss several weeks. Uh, Arkansas will get Zach Calzada instead. Uh, how different is the offense with Calzada compared to King? Uh, it's a little bit different because Calzada is has the, the bigger arm of the two, but he's significantly less mobile. I mean, he can run. We saw that in the, in the Colorado game. He made some big plays with his feet, but King is elite in terms of being able to run the football, especially a quarterback. Uh, you know, th so th there have been some changes to the scheme. Calzada likes to stay more in the pocket. Uh, King likes to move around. Uh you know, the, the arm strength is the big thing in, in Calzada's favor. He can really push the ball down the field. Accuracy is, is hit or miss. So I think that if you look at it, regardless of who the starting quarterback's got to be, they've got to run the football. And that was their strength coming into the season, and that's what the strength has to be now. And I was reading a stat, uh, I think it's for Pro Football Focus for South where Calzada's numbers are drastically different when he's pressured and when he's kept clean. So that kind of leads me into that offensive line talk. Uh, how, how would you assess that offensive line play through three games? Not very good. I think what you have is uh, uh, five very talented individuals who have not become a unit. And that's that's been the big issue. You take a look at last year's group, which was one of the best – if not the best in all of college football. You had five guys that were very experienced. The only one who wasn't overly experienced was Kenny Green. He's an All-American. Uh, Dan Moore, Jared Hocker, Ryan McCollum, Carson Green, all those guys had played three years or more, you know, as a starter. And it paid off because they knew each other's moves in their sleep. And it, they became, they went from a very average to subpar line in 2019 to one of the best in the country last year because of that match. Now you take a look at this year, Jameer Johnson from Tennessee is the left tackle, and he's been fine. He's a senior. Uh, Kenny Green, the All-American right tackle now, so it's a new position for him, at least in college. And then on the inside, you have Aki Ogunbaye, who is the best guard in the country in the 2020 class, Bryce Foster, a five-starter. And Layden Robinson, who was a, a four-star three years ago, but is an absolute monster. You know, so individually, this is a better group. As a unit, not so much. And that's proven uh, to be the case so far. And I think that Jimbo has taken it, you know, taken the emphasis this week on, okay, you guys got to go out there, toughen up, figure out what you're doing with one another. Uh, because right now what you're doing ain't hacking it. Yeah, and I guess uh, Lane Robinson has been a little bit banged up. I think they're expected to get him back. We were texting a little bit yesterday, uh, and you were telling me a little bit of a, an injury update. How, where, where does Texas A&M stand in terms of, of injuries right now? Well, it, it's a good question. Uh, obviously, King is out. He broke his, his leg uh, against Colorado. 
hopefully he'll be back in a couple of weeks. I think that it's more likely he's back from Missouri, which is in three weeks, than Alabama in two, even though that would be very nice. Um, and the big question for this weekend, I think, if you're a Hog fan, is what's going on with Agent Zero, Anaya Smith. You know, that, that guy is a uh, jack of all trades. He's one of the most uh, exciting players in college football. He had a concussion last week and missed the second half. Jimbo seems to think he's okay, but, you know, concussions are, are tricky things. So, you know, they haven't really given a diagnosis on him. So he's basically the proverbial game time decision. As a, after the, outside of that, I think Robinson will be back. That means they'll get their original five in there after Blake Trainer played last week and was well, not good. Uh, De- Devon A. Chain got hurt late in the game against New Mexico. He's going to be able to go. Uh, so, you know, really the only question is what's up with Smith? And now flipping things over to the other side of the ball, you know, it seems like Texas A&M always has a, a really talented defensive line with a bunch of dudes. Uh, wh- what's that unit looking like so far this year? They are dogs. They are, they are really good. Uh, this is the best I th- defensive front I think they've had probably in 20 years. Uh, it starts with DeMarvin Leal, the All-American, who has played both defensive tackle and defensive end this year. Uh, you know, it's, it's strange because the last couple of weeks against Colorado and New Mexico, it seemed like he came out a little bit like the days ago. Then somebody ran a play at him, had a little bit of success. Then he got really mad and just absolutely dominated from there on out. Uh, so he's the starter and one at one end, Michael Clemens, who I think has been there since the Reagan administration is uh, on, on the other side. He had a great game against New Mexico. Uh, and then in the middle, you have Jaden Peavy, a, a fifth year senior and McKinley Jackson, who I think hog fans will remember from the recruiting sagas of two years ago. Uh, so those guys are in the middle, but they've got a lot of depth. They can bring guys in waves. And this is something they haven't been able to do in a long time. I think that, honestly, it's probably the best defensive front in the SEC and maybe the country. So that kind of leads me to my next question. You know, putting the headset on, if you're an offensive coordinator, how would you scheme up to try to beat this Aggies defense? And, and who are the other guys maybe outside of that front front group uh, that you have to account for? I think there's a lot of motion and misdirection, honestly, because that seems to have been what has helped opponents so far. Really, it, it hadn't been – necessarily misdirection but running for your life uh Kent State's quarterback uh had some pretty good yards rushing on the ground but it was because he had been flushed and had to move uh Brendan Lewis for uh Colorado had a couple of really nice uh quarterback runs I think that leads well towards what KJ Jefferson wants to do but of course last week Terry Wilson the former Kentucky quarterback played against A&M kind of a similar guy not nearly as big but you know, similar traits in terms of trying to run the ball and got nowhere. So maybe they're getting a little smarter with it. But the linebackers are a big question, not because of their talent, but because of maybe being overly aggressive. Uh, Aaron Hansford, Andre White, Edrin Cooper are the big three there. Um, And they have had trouble, how do I put this? Basically running themselves out of place. They got a little too aggressive and, you know, left their gap assignments and, it's caused problems for them. Uh, you know, I say it caused problems. The biggest play they gave up last week was 16 yards. They haven't given up anything over, I think, 19 and seven quarters. So they've kind of clamped down. But that's that's the big thing is they've, they've got to stay home. They have to play assignment football. They run themselves out of position. Then the Hogs have the ability to run the ball, you know, up the middle. And we'll wrap things up with this. Uh, you don't have to give a st- score prediction necessarily, but, but how do you see this weekend's game playing out? And what would you maybe say is, is the biggest key for this game? Uh, I think it all hinges on AM's offensive line. If they play better, then AM has the talent advantage and they should win the ball game. But if they don't improve and Barry Odom schemes the way he schemes, then it becomes a very interesting ball game. AM wants to go out there, run the ball with Isaiah Spiller, run the ball with Devon A. Chain make things easier on Calzada. But if the game is put on Calzada's shoulders because they can't run because that line isn't effective, then all of a sudden you're in trouble. Well, I think that that's it for me. And I appreciate the insight, Mark. I'm really looking forward to to what should be a a really good game. And as a reminder to everyone, uh, kickoff is scheduled for 2.30 Central, and it'll be televised on CBS. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can see all of these 
uh, know the foes segments as well as press conferences, practice clips, recruit highlights, things like that. And as always, head over to hogbeat.com for your one-stop shop for all things hogs.